Okay, yeah. It's now being recorded. Okay. Because then we can post this. Yes. So we'll wait a few more, um, just maybe another minute. I see a lot of people, uh, a few people joining us in the last uh, few seconds. So. so thank you, first of all, for being present today. I made you, uh, Caroline, the co-host, just in case something happens. Sure, no problem. Okay, so I guess we'll uh, get started. So uh, thank you all uh, for joining us uh, for this uh, info session for the uh, PITS program. And I'd like to introduce myself. I'm one of the uh, co-director of this program. My name is Philippe Seguin. I'm a professor in the plant science department on the McDonald campus. And uh, we are joined also by my colleague, Caroline Begg. I'll let her uh, introduce herself. Hi everyone. I'm a faculty lecturer in the department. Well, in the Department of Plant Science at the uh, at Faculty of Agriculture and Environmental Sciences, and uh, we have one other director, uh, uh, Professor Grave uh, Valerie Gravel, who's just uh, quite busy today. I gather. Yeah. Okay. So uh, what we've prepared is uh, essentially a little PowerPoint uh, that uh, to. Oh, she's there. Oh, okay, to uh, pre uh, so I'll let her. Did she just join? Uh, yeah, she just joined. Okay, so maybe I'll let her introduce herself. So, welcome, Valerie. Hi, good morning. Sorry, I'm a little bit late. Uh, so, I'm Valerie Gravel, I'm an associate prof in uh, plant science, and I'm also one of the uh, three uh, di uh, program directors for BITS. Philippe, uh, okay. maybe we could, uh, Selena, could you introduce yourself because she's our uh, admin assistant? Yeah, Oops, let me get my video going. Yeah, there we go. Uh, hi, I'm Selena. I'm uh, I'm going to be uh, doing the administration and helping uh, Dr. Sagan, Dr. Begg, and Dr. Gravel, um, and answering any questions uh, that might come around. Okay, thank you, Selena. So again, if you have any question at any time uh, during uh, the session, please uh, don't hesitate to interrupt us. Um, so again, so I'll go through a PowerPoint that uh, presents some of the program or main element of the program. So again, uh, you're here today to hear about this uh, great uh, uh, field uh, semester, which is uh, the Barbados Interdisciplinary Tropical Studies, so BITS as we call it, uh, which will take place uh, again this summer after an interruption of a couple of years because unfortunately of the COVID. Uh, so what is the program? Uh, the program is uh, unique in that it's a bilateral program between McGill University and uh, the main local university, which is the uh, University of the West Indies, um, located uh, uh, on the island. It's a semester of learning abroad in a unique environment uh, at uh, the Institute, the Belairs Institute, as we'll see, uh, which belongs to McGill University. So it's really, uh, you know, a, a collaboration and, uh, you know, collaborative effort between the two institutions, McGill and uh, UE, as we call it. It's an entire field study semester, so it's an entire 
15 credit program. So, uh, uh, so it's just not only one course, but it's a full credit load for the summer semester. And it's offered, as I just said, during the summer. So it will be between uh, May 25 and August 5th this year. So essentially, it, it consists of three courses uh, and also one uh, project course uh, that will take place over the course of uh, the 11 weeks of the program. There's no prerequisite class that are required for this. Uh, so essentially, uh, you know, uh, it's open to pretty much anybody uh, at McGill. So all undergraduate students from all years uh, and all faculties uh, at McGill. So there's no restriction in that sense. And, uh, you know, if Caroline or Valérie or Selena, you, you want to add something, of course, uh, don't uh, hesitate to, to interrupt me at any time. We have, uh, because of, uh, as we'll discuss later, uh, of limitation at the uh, Bel Air's Research Institute where the participants are hosted, uh, we are limited at 20 participants, essentially because we have a limited number of rooms uh, to accommodate uh, the participants. So it's a, a cap at 20 participants. So the program takes place for the entire duration in Barbados, which is located in the Caribbean. Um, so it's, uh, of course, a beautiful environment, as you can see some of the pictures here on this slide. Uh, you know, it's uh, as beautiful beaches, natural vegetation, and numerous historical sites that we can find uh, on this island. It's very rich in history, culture, uh, of course, in tourism, as uh, a fascinating nature and wildlife. And so it is uh, also home to some of the best marine sanctuaries and uh, some amazing reserves and animal sanctuaries in the, the Caribbean. So it's a great, um, you know, environment uh, to have this field semester. And of course, to support some of the courses uh, that we're offering. Uh, it's taking place in Barbados, uh, but most precisely, most of the a lot of the activities, and again, as I mentioned before, of, of the students are being housed at the Bel Air Research Institute that belongs to McGill University. So it was founded in 1954, and it's uh, Canada's only teaching and research facility uh, in the Caribbean. So it's, uh, you know, in general term, it's hosting students and scientists, scientists from uh, different areas of the world, uh, not only for this field course, but other workshops and research projects in a wide, wide range of areas such as marine and terrestrial, uh, you know, science or environments. And it's, uh, again, it's uh, directly located uh, on the uh, beach or the shore, as you can see in the picture on the top right. So really you are at Bel Air's and you can see uh, the view that uh, in the location. In the bottom uh, right, uh, the bottom picture, you can see uh, also uh, some of the facilities. So these are some of the rooms where uh, the students are housed. The students are uh, sharing rooms uh, by two or three students together. So essentially, this is uh, where uh, the rooms are located in that particular wing, uh, and these have been renovated uh, recently. So what uh, the program consists uh, of, uh, like I mentioned before, there's uh, the core is three courses. The first one uh, is tropical horticulture uh, ecology. So it's a four week long course that is co-taught by both by McGill uh, University and the University of West Indies uh, professor. So uh, there's uh, both of them will teach. This course taking place uh, on the campus of the University of West Indies. So the students will commute uh, every day, uh, of course, of class uh, from uh, the Belarus Research Institute uh, to the UE campus and the distance is, is, is not, it's not very far, of course, uh, uh, Barbados is not a, a very big island. Um, I don't know if Valérie you want to describe, since uh, Valérie is a, a Professor Gravel is teaching that course, do you want to say something, uh, continue with this, the presentation? Or? Uh, sure, maybe I can uh, add a little, uh, a little few things. Um, so the uh, ORT uh, course, it's really focusing on horticulture in the Caribbean, so mainly in Barbados. So as Philip mentioned, the course is mostly given 
on uh, the campus. So it is a combination of lectures and also lab work. Uh, so we have a lab every week um, where we uh, discuss and we have small projects uh, going on in the labs. Uh, we also do quite a bit of visits in that course. So we visit really uh, the horticulture industry in Barbados. So we go and we visit with uh, growers. Um, so you have a picture of it on uh, the right, the uh, first picture on the top. Um, so we discuss with them what are the challenges of growing horticultural crops uh, in the Caribbean and mostly in Barbados. Um, we really go over uh, all aspects of the industry. So there is a little bit of more theoretical uh, plant science uh, information that we look at at the beginning and then how that can be uh, included in production. And uh, we also talk about sustainable production systems for horticulture uh, in the tropics. Um, so it is a four week long course. It's intense. Um, but usually um, it's a course that uh, students appreciate quite a bit. So that's about all I can say about that course. Yeah, thank you. So the second course is actually offered by myself and my colleague Elsa Vassa from the Department of Animal Science and also in collaboration with uh, a local scientist uh, from the University of West Indies. And this course is entitled Sustainable Land Use. And again, all the courses are intensive course because of the format of the program. So we do one course, we complete it, and we move to the next course. So that second course is this one, uh, more intense. It's three week long course. And in this one, we uh, really look at the title of the, the, the course indicate really at, at land use in insular tropical environments. So essentially, uh, looking at the environmental and socioeconomic constraint that affects sustainable uh, crop and animal production. There is a, a focus on animals, uh, but we don't only uh, restrict our discussion to animals. We also look at uh, field crops, so at a larger scale, uh, unlike the, the, you know, to complement the first course, which uh, focus on horticulture. So we look, for example, at aspect, uh, for example, of sugarcane production in the island and also at uh, other use of land locally, such as recre recreational use. We have a lot of gulfs, for example, on the island. So these are things that we uh, discuss in this course. And then uh, as uh, for the first course, we have uh, lectures that are taught, uh, but also in uh, uh, pretty much every day in the afternoon, we do uh, visits. We So we uh, visit different uh, farms, so they can be mixed farms, that include both animals and uh, crops, but also uh, purely animal farms. As you can see here um, on the bottom right picture, we have uh, this with this student, we're in, uh, essentially in a poultry uh, farm. So we're visiting those. We also look at uh, Sugarcane um, Research Institute. We go visit recreational land use. For example, we go visit the polo ground and et cetera. So there's a wide range of diversity of uh, enterprise and site that we visit for that course. And then it's followed by a third course, which is uh, taught by uh, two professors from McGill, again, with uh, some assistance and contribution from local scientists from UWE, uh, Tropical Energy and Food Technology, which has a very similar format to the previous course, which is, again, a three-week-long intensive course. And here, the focus is on tropical energy options, uh, uses biodiesel, for example, new energy source and related food and bioproducts. So all uh, these can be leveraged in uh, the tropical uh, context. And as for the previous course, it also includes visits to innovative uh, production facilities in terms of uh, sustainable energy uh, production, food industry sites, and really to have a good idea of the diversity that we have uh, uh, locally in, uh, in the energy sector in the agri-food industry in Barbados. And finally, uh, the fourth uh, element is a very essential and unique aspect of, of this program, and it's the project, which is worth six credits. And here I would uh, give the, the let uh, Caroline uh, talk about it. Um, hi, everyone. So this is a project that you work in basically a group of two to four students. You, um, once I find out which projects will be available, you can select, you know, we give priority to your first selection and then maybe it has to be number two. 
But what you're working with is um, host institutions. So we have the National Conservation Center. We have uh, Greenland, which is uh, where they do work with goats. We and also with milk. Uh, we've had people working um, analyzing bacteria in uh, the seawater, and they've been working with the Barbados Microbiology Center. Uh, there's many, and some people have been working with the Park Service there. Um, so this course, though, is going on while you're doing the other courses, but you have a day per week to work on this course, and maybe you might do some uh, weekends or whatever. Um, it Just to say that there is a very good bus service on the island. Everybody takes buses everywhere. And by the end of all of these courses and that, you will have seen the almost the entirety of Barbados because it's very easy to get around by bus. It's very efficient. And um, so many people have had a very good time working with their projects. And if you go to the website, there's videos of the last uh, projects that were done in 2019. And you can take a look at uh, um, uh, what they did and uh, what they found out. Uh, on those sites, um, yeah, yeah. So uh, just to to support and reiterate what Karen just said. So again, uh, you know, that's a very unique and appreciated, I think, aspect. Uh, of, of our uh, program. And again, uh, Caroline, here you can see some of, of the uh, pro projects that were conducted by students in, in previous years. And we have uh, here the link here you see at the bottom where you can consult some of those uh, summer projects you have for all the existence of, of the program. You can see all the projects that were conducted by uh, the students in previous years, and also some videos were produced in recent years uh, to illustrate some of what have been achieved by the students. And if we continue, uh, I just want to show you briefly one example. We met, whoops, it didn't work. Uh, where it should we're not get it's just five minutes but i'm just going to put it a few minutes just so you can get an appreciation for what uh, some of the students have been producing so this program this project was conducted as you can see by three mcgill uh, students and one ue student Barbados is a tropical island situated in the Eastern Caribbean, offering a luxury sun, sand, and sea tourist experience, along with numerous attractions and festivals throughout the year. The expansive coral reef composition makes the island a leading destination for snorkeling and diving, while the chalk and clay components constitute the extensive sandy white shores, making Barbados a desirable destination for relaxing holiday travel. As such, Pristine beaches are of utmost importance to Barbados, since the economy relies heavily on coastal tourism, maintaining top quality beach water is integral. For our BITS 2019 internship project, we work with the Government Analytical Services Microbiology Lab to collect and analyze water samples from 16 beaches around the island, eight on the west coast and eight on the south coast, as both of these coasts are popular for marine activities. Over the course of the project, we collected water samples from each coast three times in total. Marine water quality in Barbados can be compromised by pollution from agriculture, industry, and urban development. Barbados is a densely populated nation with a high volume of cruise ships docking at the island's ports. The extensive human activity taking place close to the shore can impact the quality of shallow ocean water. We hypothesized that the water quality in the south coast would be more contaminated than the west coast due to higher density of human activity, urban developments, industrial activity, and ports from, from cruise ships, shipments, and fishing. One of the most commonly identified pollutants in recreational waters are fecal coliforms. Fecal bacteria are microorganisms that inhabit the gastrointestinal tract of humans. The primary sources of fecal bacterial contamination in coastal zones are through the discharge of sewage and human waste. In order to monitor the quality of marine waters, indicator organisms are used to determine the likelihood of the presence of pathogenic organisms in water. Indicators are elements that can be monitored to approximate the risk of human exposure in an environment. 
although their sole presence may not cause the disease, their presence suggests a high probability of co-occurring pathogens. The two indicator organisms we used are E. coli and Enterococcus faecalis, two organisms that are used the most worldwide. In the lab, we used membrane filtration technique and growth and selective and differential medias with each of our beach samples in order to isolate and count these two organisms. Marine? So I'll stop uh, the video here. You can watch uh, the video uh, entirely uh, at a later time, but it's just to give you an idea of, of the type of activities that uh, were conducted in previous years. And again, you have uh, much more videos that present all types of projects that were uh, conducted in the past uh, by our students. Philip, can I just interject for one minute? Oh, yeah, I just course. want to yeah. mention that in Barbados, um, beach going to the beach is not only by the tourists, but also very much by the local population. So this was a critical study for the health of the local population as well as uh, tourists that were, were there were coming as well. Yeah. So uh, the question may be at this point, what's the application procedure? So uh, there's a few steps, a simple step. The first one is to fill uh, the BITS application form that you can find uh, on our website. So again, it's www.mcgill.ca slash BITS. Um, and you have uh, the link here um, directly, but it's a simple form that you need to fill. Then you need also to email your letter of intent, which is a maximum of maximum length of one page and CV uh, to uh, Caroline Beck uh, at mcgill.ca. And for non-McGill student, which probably doesn't apply uh, among uh, those uh, present today, it's also a, a copy of your academic transcript. So the application deadline is officially January 23rd. Uh, 2023, but uh, we would recommend you to apply as soon as possible because, again, the space is limited as the number is capped at 20 um, students because of limitation we have in terms of rooms available at the Bel Air Research Institute. Uh, what are the selection criteria? Uh, it's an assessment that is done by uh, us, uh, but it's based on uh, your application, uh, applicant's uh, expression of interest, uh, your CGPA, and the study program that you have. Uh, so students accepted in the uh, program for this summer would be notified prior to the application deadline. And there would be then, uh, if you're accepted, a mandatory pre-departure orientation uh, to take place, uh, which the exact date to be determined that uh, essentially prepare a selected student uh, for uh, going uh, for an entire semester uh, study abroad uh, program, uh, essentially. And you can find much more information about you know, what is required, the do document travel documentation, immunization, uh, possible funding sources, uh, again, at our website. OK, so yeah. there's, a, there's a question, Philip, in the, uh, uh, okay. yeah. in the chat. The difference between the BITS program and the other Barbados field semester. Yes, so uh, of course, that's a good question. Um, I see another question, but we'll answer them one by one. Uh, one of the different, well, there's several differences. One is, of course, the timing of the uh, that's offered. Uh, we are during the summer semester, so it allows you to do it uh, at a time that uh, doesn't interfere with uh, the, the rest of your academic program. Uh, the other semester is offered uh, in the fall semester. So that's one of the difference. The second is the focus um, of uh, the programs, um, which differ between both of them. Um, we have a, a focus that is uh, um, mainly on uh, agricultural sustainability and land use, while uh, the other program is, is much more focused on other aspects uh, uh, resolving, uh, revolving around sustainability. But the exact focus is, is being redefined. It's my understanding. I'm not that familiar with it. I don't know if, uh, Caroline, you want to add something to this or... In the past, that program has focused a little bit more on water, but I, as Philip said, it's it's going to be, it's being redefined because the people who are running it have left. Um, also, I don't think they were as involved with UWE, uh, the University of West Indies, as we are. And um, 
uh, and the, the big difference is the fall and summer term. Yeah. So you don't lose out about if you have specific courses you have to take, you don't uh, miss having to take those courses. Yeah. I see there was another question also. Uh, will the program run in the future during the school term, not in the summer? No, that's not the plan. Uh, this is a summer uh, semester, so that's the characteristic. And again, uh, uh, one positive aspect we see is that allows you not to interfere with some of the other course that you need to take. So, and it allows you by doing it in the semester, summer semester, to potentially graduate one semester before, uh, because you will complete fifteen credits during a, a summer semester. And just to note that if you're with science, you can get a take the minor in the field studies uh, minor. Uh, the, uh, the Faculty of Science offers that, and I, I'm not sure about arts, but I'm pretty sure that science and IDS, I think, does as well. Yeah. So uh, another question, uh, of course, uh, is uh, regarding fees. So the program fee is approximately $11,000, should be about that. The final price is to be uh, uh, confirmed, but it, it should not be much more than that. Um, then whoops sorry it's isn't... okay and it includes uh, meals so it's two meals per day the lunch and the supper during the week so monday to friday the accommodation so it's two or three students per room kitchen access for the breakfast and meals during the weekend uh, internet access computer room access uh, the study visa but it does not include the airfare the regular tuition uh, immunization if needed, health insurance, um, and other visas or policy certificate. And we see PCR tests if there was requirements, there's none at the moment. Um, the entry visa are not required for citizen of Canada and the US, but could be required for citizen of other countries. So we'd select that you uh, contact us or uh, Selena, uh, the program assistant for, for uh, getting information on this. And uh, again, police certificate are required for all per participant, but and the cost is approximately $60 Canadian for this. Uh, refund policy, the pro program fee are not refundable unless there is an unforeseen acceptable circumstance, but this would be dealt on a one to one to one basis. And the payment is there's a thousand dollar deposit once accepted in the program and uh, must be uh, paid by March 10. It's non refundable and the final balance of the payment is uh, on March 24. Can I just interject for a minute? Philip, yes, can you yes. go back? Just go back oh, to that yes. slide. Mm -hmm. um, just wanted to say that if you have um, uh, sort of uh, allergies or meal restrictions, or if you're vegetarian, vegan, or such, that can all be accommodated by Belairs. There's no problem. In our last um, session, we had over half of the group were uh, vegetarian, and so they were all accommodated by the meal plan. It was not a problem. And the other thing I just wanted to mention was that if you have specific questions on the visas, health insurance, immunization, that would be the thing that you would uh, contact Selena uh, about, our administrative uh, assistant. And you can contact me about courses and things like that. But all of the airfare, et cetera, that's what you would contact Selena with. And maybe to uh, continue uh, regarding the question that was asked regarding difference between both semester, uh, just to underline that uh, one thing that is quite unique about uh, our uh, program is that um, we it's really like I mentioned early on, a, a collaborative program between the two institutions, McGill and UE. And uh, there's involvement from professors from the UE and also students uh, from the University of West Indies. So you can see in that uh, uh, project course that uh, I presented briefly, uh, there was three students from McGill and one from the University of West Indies. So it gives also a chance to get a different perspective uh, during the program by having not only professors, but also students from uh, the local university. So I think that's an aspect that is quite interesting uh, uh, from uh, our program. So at this point, uh, uh, you know, it would be uh, the time for you if you have specific question, things that you'd like clar to be clarified or, you know, question about uh, Barbados, the program, specific courses, um, you know, uh, the floor is open. Don't be shy. Uh, 
you know, we're here for you to answer your question. And, uh, you know, I, I think from experience, this program has been running since 2009. Um, unfortunately, again, was not offered in the past two years because of COVID, but the feedback has always been very positive. I would encourage you again to look at some of the projects that have uh, been uh, conducted or done by uh, some of our students in recent years. Uh, some of, uh, most of them, I would say, are, are really exciting. And again, trying to tackle some of, of issues or problem, uh, you know, that are uh, problematic for uh, local, uh, you know, Bajans uh, or Barbados in general. So I think there's, you know, it's, it's a very interesting and well-appreciated program, uh, in my opinion. I may be biased, but, you know, um, I think that's uh, it's a great, uh, uh, you know, uh, opportunity for learning and, you know, uh, looking at something uh, different uh, in your academic program. So, again, uh, the floor is open. If you have questions, really don't be shy. You can ask orally. Um, you can uh, type in the uh, chat box, uh, whatever you're more comfortable. Um, there has been some questions about um, uh, academic, uh, sorry, prerequisites to the courses. Uh, there are no prerequisites to any of the courses. Um, mo we've had a diverse group of people in previous years from arts, um, agriculture, to science, to, uh, I think Philippe said one time, somebody from religious studies, and everybody did very well in the courses. There's a lot of support and help. So there's not, so if you don't have a, a deep background in um, uh, agriculture, that is not a problem. There's a question, is tuition included in the full price of the? No, it's not. Uh, yeah, generally, true. weekends are our personal time, but sometimes you might have some project work, um, but generally people do various things on the weekends, and there are definitely a large number of holidays in Barbados during the summer. There's carnival, all kinds of things like that. There's a question regarding financial aid. I suggest that you consult our website or uh, uh, you know, there's different possibilities available, but I think it really depends on on uh, you know on the student or you know where they are in their program, where they come from. So uh, there are some definitely. Uh, I would suggest that you contact Selena directly, uh, and we would then be able to provide you with more specific answer regarding financial aid. Uh, the tuition, uh, is tuition the same as McGill tuition? Uh, yes, it's the same. It's uh, per, per credit uh, as any other course, yeah. And again, remember uh, one possible advantage that we've seen in the past for this uh, when you consider cost and everything is that uh, if you do structure your program and your credits uh, properly, uh, you could finish potentially a semester before what was planned by taking 15 credits in the summer. So that's something to consider when you're looking at the whole cost. If you're able to graduate one semester uh, before, well, these are less costs for you to incur uh, later on in, in your academic program overall. So that's one thing that you should consider uh, less in terms of needs of, of your apartment and all this. So there's a cost saving, although there's a cost here, uh, it's some money that you would not have to spend on your last semester, potentially, again, depending how you structure your, your, your courses. Um, I can just add uh, regarding financial aid um, on the website, there's the link for Logic. It's a government program um, and the program is a good candidate for um, subsidies. Uh, I think they're about $400. Um, applicants would do that individually, make the application, but it, it is a good candidate. Um, it is a limited uh, government program, so it would be first come, first serve. So another, you know, reason to to sign up early to be able to make the application um, and uh, qualify for the program. There, thank you. Uh, there's a question regarding residence in summer. Uh, you mean uh, 
I don't know, uh, Aizen has asked a question. You mean uh, the residents at the Better Research Institute? The question is it full? Is that your question? It the uh, yeah. it's yeah. only the McGill students that are there. Yeah, so it, it's usually full. Um, and again, as, as yeah, Caroline said, the, the UE students do not stay there. They usually stay uh, in their own uh, residence on campus, which is, um, I don't know, what, 20 minute by car? Oh, I don't even think it's 20. I think it's 10 minutes. There's a bit of a walk, but uh, they're very close. Barrios is a very small island, so um, everything is close. Um, uh, yeah, and, and the students from UE are... It's diverse. They come from Barbados, but also other Caribbean island from, yeah. uh, you know, uh, it could be from Saint, yeah, Saint Lucia or uh, some of the other uh, islands. Yeah. Yeah. I would just add that it also depends on how many students are in the BITS program. Um, mm -hmm. The last time the program was given, there were um, rooms that were also occupied by students from a, an American uh, university for part of the summer. Um, so it is possible that other students would be present on uh, on the Bel Air campus, uh, depending on how many rooms are available. But yeah, not for the whole time. And it, it, I no. think that only happened once, really. Um, yeah. Yeah. I mean, most of the time it will be uh, the cohort of the BITS program. That's the vast majority. There's also, of course, the teacher from McGill. So it's not only the student. We have a a program assistant that is present there at all time uh, for question or safety reasons. And of course, there's a local staff of, of, uh, of billers. When can we expect to know if we've been accepted after we first apply? Um, uh, Caroline, you want to answer that? <laughs> um, we we'd probably review the applications by, let's say, the 1st of December, the ones that have come in at by that point. And so we could let you know by, let's say, the first week in December. And then we will wait for the remaining applicant. If there's, if there's space, uh, then the 23rd. But really, if people are suitable, then there's no reason to, um, to not say yes. It is somewhat on a, a first come first serve basis, yes. Yeah, somehow. And just to say, we do already have one full application at this time. And regarding the question, the makeup of student, occasionally we had international student uh, joining the McGill group, you know, but there's been a, you know, just a, a few students that would have come from American University, but it was at maximum one uh, per uh, year that we would have. And again, the you know the residents are uh, again two or three occupants here. Member Billers uh, uh, is directly located on the beach, so it's uh, it's not close to it. It's directly on the beach. So again, for the weekend, you are free to do uh, pretty much whatever you want, uh, explore and the island, and uh, yeah. And as I said, the bus service goes all the way around. Uh, you can take the buses from different places and. Uh, it's very easy to to go around and visit the uh, all of the uh, small towns and that that are around. Yeah, and it's quite affordable, uh, you know, yeah. the bus service. So. so again, don't be shy. Any other question can be in the chat orally. Also, if you have question you you prefer to ask, uh, you know you're welcome to email us. Uh, you know we'd be glad to answer a question you would want a more personalized uh, answer. Uh, you can contact uh, Selena and she could direct uh, the question to whoever would be the most appropriate. And I think, uh, again, uh, we've been offering this since 2009, and uh, I think it's been a very positive, uh, great experience, uh, um, you know, for uh, both the, the, the student from UE and McGill. Uh, what minor can you fulfill with this program? Uh, Caroline, you want to talk about uh, that? 
the I know that if you're in science, you can do the field, field studies minor. This is 15 credits. You only have to take one other um, 400 level course, I believe, to fulfill it, uh, to get the 18 credits for the minor. I believe IDS, uh, though I'm not sure now, I take that back. Uh, ag, does that include ag engineering science? Ag environmental science, I mean? Uh... Ag environmental science? No, it's not at our faculty here, unfortunately. I've been talking to the Associate Dean of Academics about this because I don't understand why we don't have it. Um, so right now, it's not part of our faculty, but um, yeah. Uh, but some of the courses can uh, uh, be part of other uh, minors that are on the, uh, on the campus and in, ag in ag and environmental sciences. And I would say that, uh, you know, a lot of students uh, from our faculty or the Ag Environmental Program have taken the BITS program. And, you know, I, I think you need, even if there's no minor attached to it, you know, the experience that you gain, and we've seen from students that they've gained through the course they took and the project they did, uh, you know, it's a value added definitely to your program, even if you, you would not have a minor tag to it. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, in terms of employer, potential employers after uh, just from the projects and, uh, you know, I think Caroline, you had mentioned that a lot yeah. of had uh, viewed that as a, as a major uh, component of their training. Uh, in uh, uh, Absolutely. Philip. I, I've had, I've written uh, several uh, reference letters for the um, previous participants in the program, and they all wanted me to mention the project course because they found it, uh, very comprehensive they had to work as a team they had to be independent they had to develop it you know they they worked together with a host institution so they found that that really helped with their applications either to graduate studies or other places so they really did uh, appreciate the project uh, course And again, if you want to come and talk to us in person, you were available and we'll have also other uh, uh, info session that will have both on both campus in person. So if you want also to come and chat with us at any time, uh, you know, uh, we'll uh, advertise when those uh, will take place in the next several weeks. And, you know, you're always welcome to just drop by and come chat with us uh, regarding uh, uh, the program as well. So again, we have a few more minutes for questions. Uh, don't be shy. So I guess if there's no last chance for a question, again, in the chat, or you can turn on your microphone if there's no question, I guess that would conclude our uh, info session. So last chance. No. So again, if you have question that comes uh, to mind, you're welcome to uh, contact Selena. Or again, uh, you know, we would have other info session in person uh, in the coming weeks. So you check uh, around for dates and, you know, more than welcome again to chat with you in person. So on this, I would welcome, thank you all uh, for being present today. Thank you, uh, my, uh, my uh, colleagues here also, Caroline, Valérie, Selina for, for being uh, here. And again, if you have any question at any time, uh, please email us, uh, I think. I'm biased again, but I think it's a great program. Uh, we've been offered for many years. Uh, I think that calls for, for its success. And uh, I think, uh, you know, if you uh, have an opportunity to uh, join the program, I think that's something that uh, really would benefit uh, your academic training. So on this, I don't know if Valérie, Caroline, Selena, you want to add something? No, no just we're available if you have questions or you want the program. Yeah. Yeah, feel free to contact us. If you have problems with filling out the form or anything like that, uh, do contact me.
but it should work. We have one, it, it has worked, so, but you never know. Okay, so thank you very much. So I wish you a great week, a rest of the week and rest of the day. And, uh, you know, hopefully uh, we see you in Barbados. Okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Bye, Thanks, everyone. everyone. Bye. Bye.